combat is always a great deal more satisfying when you can actually see your enemy's health. So in this tutorial, we'll take a look at how to make an enemy's portrait and current health display at the top of the screen, and switch enemies depending on which is the closest to the player. Alright, let's get started. Now this tutorial is definitely set up to follow on my player health tutorials, which came first, which already have you set up so that your player has his own UI displaying his health. That said, you should be able to follow along and make this work even if you have not already added those scripts. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is make sure that you have an enemy in your scene and your enemy is going to need to have an enemy health script on him. Now we'll take a look at that enemy health script and essentially what is most important here is that you have a way of keeping track of the enemy's max health and current health. The other thing that's gonna be important that we're gonna to need to add here is just simply a public sprite, and this is going to be his portrait. Now that you've made that little touch up, you'll notice back in Unity that there's now a box here to put the portrait for each of our enemies, and I'm simply going to click on a white skull for my white skeleton, head over to my green skeleton and add a green skull, and then finally head over to my purple skeleton and make sure that he has a purple skull. All right, now we're ready to get started on actually scripting the display itself. So to do this, you're going to need to create a brand new script. And I'm gonna call mine enemy health display. Now you can save yourself a lot of time if you have already followed my player health display one. And actually I'm just gonna show you how we can use that as a bit of a shortcut. So first off, if you get into the heart display script, and you'll notice at the top here, we are declaring a whole bunch of variables. We can actually copy every single one of those. Head on over to our enemy health display, and we can paste those right into there. Now, right off the bat, you're gonna notice an underline with the image here, and that's because we are referencing the user interface, but we have not yet added that library. So if you head up to the top, we're gonna add a using line for at using unityengine.ui. That'll clear that up. And the other thing is we're not actually going to be referencing our player health script in order to get information for this one. It's going to be our enemy health. And just make sure here that whatever name you're putting in is the actual name of the script you're using to keep track of your enemy health. All right, at this point, there's just a couple more variables we're gonna to need to put in. And these are gonna be for the images that we want to display in our UI. So I'm gonna make a public image and this one's going to be for the portrait image and also a public sprite which will be the portrait itself. Now the portrait image is actually just a placeholder. It will link this script to your actual UI and the sprite is going to tell the image um, which sprite it would like to portray at any given time. All right so now that we've declared all of our variables we're ready to actually get this thing scripting so that it displays our enemy portrait and health. Now to do this, I'm gonna borrow heavily again from my heart display script. I'm just gonna head down into update where it finds the max health and health and then generates empty and full hearts to match it. So we're just actually gonna copy everything inside of that update, head back over to our enemy health display. Now we're actually not gonna put this one right into update. We're gonna create a new public void and I'm gonna call this one health bar on. And we can paste everything inside of there. Now you'll notice it's already telling us it doesn't like player health, and that's okay because we're not wanting to get information from the player health script. As we declared in our variable up here, it's enemy health that we wanna look at. So we'll quickly switch those to say enemy health and enemy health here. And you'll notice after the enemy health, the max health and health, those do need to exactly match whatever you've called your variables in your enemy health script. If we take a look at mine, I called mine max health and current health. So I just need to make sure that I'm using the same names inside of this script. All right, at this point now, anytime health bar on is called, it will check my enemy health script to see how much health and max health I have, generate the correct number of full and empty hearts. Now the only problem at this point is that health bar on will currently never get called. And for the moment at least, I'm just gonna type it into my update function here so that we can test this out and see how it's working. Back in Unity now, we'll want to click on our player character. We're gonna go add component and we're actually gonna to wanna to put the enemy health display on our character. 
The reason we're putting it on our character is because eventually we'll be calculating the distance between our character to find the nearest enemy. And so we want this script to be on our player. Now you'll notice we've got some dragging and dropping to do here. First of all, it's going to want to know what a full and an empty heart look like. So let's grab our full heart sprite and our empty one. Next, it wants to know where our portrait image is supposed to appear in the game. Now this is on our canvas. I called mine enemy portrait and we're to drag that in there. That way the script knows where to put the picture of the enemy. And finally, it says portrait here. Now at this point, we don't actually, well, let's put a sprite in there for now because we haven't set up all of our detection yet. And so if I were to click on sprites and go to portraits, I could just put the head of one of my skeletons in there. And now for enemy health, for the moment at least, let's just take our skeleton again. We'll just grab our skeleton character and drag him in there. Now that our initial coding is done, we can actually set up our UI display elements. So first off, I'm going to click on my canvas here in order to zoom out, and we can see my player's health system is set up there. I'm going to set up something very similar for my skeleton here, or for any enemy for that matter. I'm going to give them a maximum of 10 health, but what I want to do this time, add it as a UI image, and then make sure that the sprite is set to a heart. I'm going to set them up on this side, but I'm going to change the size so that there's it's clearly not my player's health that we're talking about here. And so I think what I might do is take it down by half. So we get a much smaller system up and running here. As with the player, though, I'm going to make 10 of these. All right, with that set up, <laughs> we're ready to actually do a little bit of work. I'm also going to rename these ones as I did with my character, calling them hearts. I'm going to call them enemy heart. All right, and there's one last set of boxes that we need to fill before we can test this out, and that is our hearts. Now, if I hit the arrow here, you'll notice that I can add all of my hearts from my UI. I'm just going to save a little time, though, and I'm going to click this lock here to lock my inspector. Then I can come over to my hierarchy, click the first enemy heart, hold shift, and then click the last one. And then I can drag them all over here at the same time. Now our script is going to know which hearts it's supposed to display and not display when I'm running the game. Now when I test the game, it automatically reads from my enemy health script that he currently has three of three health, and it shows me his portrait. And if I come over and deal damage to him, my fireball does two damage, and I can jump on his head to finish him off. Now that's working pretty well if you only have one enemy in your game, but if you've got more, there's a problem because it's not actually doing anything when I go near other enemies. And so we've still got a little bit of work to do. So at this point, we're gonna head right back into your enemy health display script. All right, so once we're back in our script here, we're ready to get working at finding out which enemy we actually want to display the information for. Now to do this, we're gonna head down below our start and update functions, and we're gonna create a new public void called find closest enemy. Now the first thing that we wanna do here is we're going to declare a couple of variables. The first one is gonna be a float that we're gonna call closest enemy distance. And to start off, we're gonna set that to math function dot infinity. Now that seems a little bit much. Um, math infinity essentially means set it to the size of your entire scene. And so at the start, we want to actually scan the whole scene for enemies, and that's what this is going to do. Our starting distance of the closest enemy will be the whole screen, and then it'll zoom in to find which one is actually closest. Don't worry about the green squiggly here. That'll go away later when we actually use this variable. The next variable we're going to do is an enemy health variable. Now for this one, I'm using the exact name of my enemy health script, so make sure that you do the same. And we're going to call this one nearest enemy. And to start off, it's going to be equal to null because we don't yet know what the nearest enemy is. Next, we're going to make a list, an array, of objects in the game that have the enemy health script on them. We'll call these potential targets. And we're going to make them equal to every object in our entire level that has the enemy health script on them. For this one, you're going to want to click find objects of type. Make sure you do objects of type, not just object. Otherwise, you'll only get the closest one. And we want to make sure that we get all of the objects that have enemy health on them. 
that will generate our list of potential targets. Now at this point, we're going to create a for each loop. Now this loop is essentially going to look at every object that has an enemy health script. And for now, we'll call them current enemy. And it'll look at every single one that is in our list of potential targets. If you've never used a for each loop before, they are super helpful. And they just allow you to go through every object in a list and perform the same function for all of them. Now, well, the one that we want to do here is, first of all, as soon as we get started, we're going to declare a float called distance away. And that is simply going to be set to our current enemies transform dot position minus our players transform dot position. Now, one other thing we're going to do here is we're just going to add a dot, and we're going to do another math function here. In this case, it's going to be square magnitude. Now, this might seem a little bit odd or confusing. Essentially, what this is doing, it's working a lot like using a vector2 distance, where it calculates the distance of two objects. But by putting the square magnitude in here, we're essentially saving the system some work so that it can do it um, in a more efficient way that won't cause slowdown or anything like that. But essentially, this is just quickly figuring out the distance of our current enemy from our player. And we'll call that distance away. Now, if the distance away is less than our other closest enemy's distance, then it's going to set our closest enemy distance to be equal to distance away. It will set our nearest enemy to be equal to the current enemy. And then what it's going to do, now that we know what our nearest enemy is, this whole loop will go through every enemy in our list. It will check how far it is from the player. And if it is closer than the last object it checks, it will make this new object our current enemy. And it will do this for all of them. So at the end, you'll have your current enemy. Now what we want to do is read the enemy health script to find out some information. So first of all, now we're going to say that max health for this script is going to be equal to the nearest enemy dot max health. So it'll read that script. It'll find the enemy's script and read that. It's also going to check health. And it will make sure that it's equal to nearest enemy dot health. Sorry. And then remember, in my script, I called it current health. So I want to make sure that this one is also current health. And finally, we want to find out what the portrait is. So we want to make sure that portrait image dot sprite is going to be set to be equal to whatever the nearest enemies portrait is. All right, we are getting close here now. Now, one other thing that's really important is we want to make sure that we are actually calling this function at some point. And so right now, it's just sitting here never being called. So we're going to head on into update and make sure that it is constantly calling find closest enemy. So it will always be searching to see where our nearest enemy is. Now, one other thing I want to add to this find closest enemy function is I don't want it to display the closest enemy all of the time. If I'm nowhere near an enemy, then I'd like it to just leave my UI nice and clean. And so I'm going to come down here. And after it's done this for each loop to find the nearest enemy, I'm just going to have it check to see if the closest enemy distance is less than or equal to. Now, you can pick a number here. I'm going to pick 25. I find that that gets me close enough that I know the enemy is a threat. But if I get far away that it's no longer a threat, it will simply disappear. And essentially, what we want to do is if the closest enemy's distance is less than or equal to 25, then we're going to turn on the health bar. And that is the function we wrote earlier that will decide how many hearts to display. We can then head back up to our update. We no longer need to turn health bar on constantly because it'll get turned on every time an enemy is close instead. Now, the other thing we want to do, this will turn on our health bar once we get close enough. But at this point, we're never turning the health bar back off again. So we're going to add an else statement here. And that is just going to be to turn off the health bar. So 
how far off. And as you've probably noticed, we have not yet created that function. And so we're going to need to do that now. We're going to create a public void called health bar off. And this one's actually not super complicated, fortunately. Now, what this one is going to do is essentially it's going to take portrait dot enabled equals false. So it'll turn off the face picture. Oh, and sorry, that should be portrait image. And the other thing we want to do is turn off our hearts. So we're going to use the same for statement that we're actually using down below um, to turn the hearts on. But for, and we'll just use this loop here, for integer i equals 0 to start, as long as i is less than the number of hearts that we have. And then we'll add one each time. And essentially, all we're doing here is making sure that hearts whichever one we happen to be looking at at the time, dot enabled equals false. Now, if typing that up is a pain in the butt for you, you can just copy that line right from here. And essentially, that just creates a for loop that goes through all of the hearts you have and make sure to turn them off. Now, before we go in and try this out, there's one little tweak left to make. If you head on down to your health bar on function, you'll notice we have some redundant information here. At the start of health bar on, we're checking the enemy health script to figure out our max health and current health. But if you take a look up here, we're actually doing that already inside of our find closest enemy script. And so we don't want to be doing this. So I'm gonna take those two lines right out of here, hit delete, save, and now we can head back into our game. Now when we head into our game, we have a working script where when you get close enough, the enemy's portrait and health appear, but they disappear when we move away. You can deal damage to that enemy, and he will disappear once he's destroyed, and the next enemy will show up as well. We can deal damage, walk away, come back, and his health is still being kept track of, and it's working really nicely. This is the Night Runner, and I just want to say thank you for watching this tutorial. If you found it helpful, I'd ask you please click the like button or subscribe to the channel.